I did not think that I would come on here and do another trauma talk, but something happened this Friday that really, really shook me to the core. So if you're sensitive to the topics of depression and suicide and anxiety and queerness, don't watch. And if you can stomach it, I'm about to put some really heavy things out there and I'm about to name names. So if you have it in you, I promise that I would use this platform for good. And I'm hoping that something good will be accomplished today. This is Hanala. She is a Jewish female performer and singer. I'm actually quite friendly with her and I know her for a really long time. And here you can see I'm scrolling and I'm showing you all the times that she's been sending me her podcast, as you can see, and her songs, constantly sending me all the things that she's doing. And as you can see, my responses are bare or I don't respond at all. But she keeps sending me her podcast and finally sent me a voice note asking me for feedback. And I said, I'll listen. And then she sent me another one with her thumb up. And as you could see, I say, hi, I'm disconnected. And I responded that this is what it costs to promote it on my page. Obviously, she never reached out to promote it. But as you can see, we have a kind of business relationship. So our relationship was that we were both in the Jewish entertainment field, but it's not like we had a personal relationship. And when she sent me her podcast, frankly, I really didn't want to listen to it because she has opinions I don't agree with. And I don't believe that people should listen to things just to make them upset. And guess what? She's entitled to her opinion, like everyone who has opinions that I don't agree with. I can't knock on every door and try to convince everybody to see things my way. And I wouldn't want her to try to convince me to see things her way. That's the beauty of this world. Polarity. But what I did have a problem was this voice note that I'm about to play for you. It is frightening. These two religious girls got married and somehow she saw that video. And this was her response to the video of the two religious girls that had a religious ceremony. Make a mockery of it and celebrate wearing dresses and Jewish music so that they can eat each other out for the rest of their lives to publicly celebrate the fact that they're going to be busy fingering each other and having lesbian sex is appalling it is the way of the Gaim. it is there's a million things that we don't do because it's just the way of the Gaim. this is not okay this is a mockery of jewish weddings and they went public with it they posted it all over social media and they are going to get a backlash like they have never seen they're going to be divorced in six months now, I know other people are bashing her publicly and defaming her, and I don't believe in cancel culture, and I also don't believe that everyone is all good and all bad. So I reached out to her privately, and this is what I wrote. Scroll very slowly so you can see that I reached out. I said, I'm just sending you some extra love. I want to remind you that we don't live in the world of truth. We don't know what the truth is till Mashiach comes. And sometimes... You make mistakes. And that was my approach, a loving approach. And I said, I hope that you take the time to respond to me. And I am hurt. I came from the perspective of being hurt. And this was the response. Hey, first of all, I'm completely sharing my Shabbos. I shut my phone off. Shabbos started at, I think it was 7.15. I want to pause and say that doing this to someone who told you they're just hurt is a little bit condescending. But okay, I understand she's probably getting a lot of hate, so it started off with defensiveness. Human human reaction. So yeah, I, I keep Shabbos, 100%. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, yeah, and as far as talking about it, I can't talk about it with you over Instagram. Do you want so she says she can't talk about it with me over Instagram, even though she's discussed many things with me on Instagram. Okay. Want to come on my podcast tomorrow? I'm actually looking for a guest for Monday, and I'm more than happy to talk to you. Let me know if you're interested. This, this, this needs to be a proper conversation. Also, did you listen to the episode? So that, that's how it started. I say, I don't want this to become a public spectacle. I don't want to go on a podcast. I reached out to you because I know you, and that voice note that went out is your truth, and it hurt me. They're painful. I am hurt woman to woman, Jew to Jew. You hurt me and many others with your words. And this was the response that I got. I knew you didn't listen to the show. I knew you didn't listen to the show. 
anyone who came at, my, at me with negativity didn't listen to the show. And someone like you is smart enough to know that there's more to everything than meets the eye. So take 40 minutes. You could even fast forward it or put it on a higher speed. So it only takes 20 minutes and listen to everything I have to say. And then if there's something there. So this was about the podcast and I don't want to listen to the podcast. I specifically didn't mention the podcast because people are entitled to their opinions. What I said is private is MS. I said I was hurt. And I said, oy vey, not even an I'm sorry. And she said, I'm not denying what I said is true, but there's much more than just the voicemail. You don't want to listen because you're not ready to listen. I said a simple I'm sorry for the pain that your words carry. I don't need to listen to someone's opinion on whether they agree with my lifestyle. I purposely don't listen because I'm entitled to live my life and they're entitled to live theirs. She should say whatever she wants on her podcast. I would never attack someone for having an opinion. And then I just responded that way. And then she linked her podcast. Okay, so as a comedian, obviously I have to find the joke in this and say that I don't believe there's a woman in the world who would marry another woman and commit to a life with them for sex. I don't care how great it is. And I believe that Hanala did not marry her husband either for the purpose of sex or the other vile words she used in her voice note. I believe that people marry because they want to commit to this person and they want to build a life with this person and they want to build a life with someone they respect and love and their best friend. And of course, intimacy comes along with that. But to reduce someone's whole relationship, whether you're straight or whether you're not, to sex minimizes the connection and commitments that people make towards each other. Let's begin with that. And now let me talk about the trauma. When I heard that voice note, if I tell you my body had such a reaction, because it wasn't about Hanala, but it was about the many Hanalas that I've come across in my life. And the other people that will listen to it and take that personally. I know she's one person. She doesn't have that many followers. But it's more about the message that's being given over. And so today I want to talk to two different people. The first group of people I want to talk to are the people that are hurt and in pain from that voice note. My dream, my hope was to send this to Hanala privately and for her to say to me, Leah, I'm sorry for hurting you. Because when someone tells me that I hurt them, before anything, I want to hold space for the fact that I caused them pain. So number one, there's the pain aspect. And she didn't apologize for that. So for her, I just wish her tons of brachos and I hope that she gets to a point in her life where someone says, you hurt me, and she can own that. I'm pretty sure that her husband will do that and her children will do that and her friends will do that. I know for me, the people that I personally want in my life are people that I can say, hey, you hurt me and they can say, I'm sorry. And then later we can have conversations about other things. But there was no attacking. There was no negativity. I simply said, hey, human to human, Jew to Jew, you hurt me. So today I want to talk to two people. The first group of people that I want to talk to are the people that heard that voice note and are horrified and hurt. Know this. I'm no rabbi and I don't know the Torah. But one thing I for sure know is Derech Eretz Kadmala Torah. And the way that that person spoke and the way that person speaks about other human beings, let alone your fellow Jew, that is not Yiddishkeit. I go to a shul where I'm one of the only people that wear pants and probably one of the only queer people in the shul. And it's a from shul. But I'm welcomed and people say good Chavez. And when I travel, I go to other shuls. And there was never... A Rav or a Rebetzin or a group of people that I've met in shul, in my pants and in my hair, that have not wished me well and have not been kind to me. Because that's true Yiddishkeit. So for those of you that are listening and thinking that she's an example of what true Judaism is, no, she is not. She's an example of someone who took Judaism and took the Torah and took religion, which is supposed to be a tool in your life to guide you through life, which what is life if not love? We are all a Tselem Elohim, and God is love. Whether you believe there's a God up there or whether you believe there's God in all of us, whatever your belief is, the fact of the matter is we know what true Yiddishkeit is, and it starts with basic Derech Eretz. And those of you that know the good Jews and the from Jews know that this is not a reflection of Judaism. Let me be very clear. Now, I'm no rabbi, and I don't claim to know halacha, and I don't claim to know Torah. But what I do claim to know is this. 
It is not a sin to celebrate your love. It is absolutely not a sin. And I would love to find one person who challenges me and tells me that. What is a sin in the Torah are certain sexual acts. And as Jews, we believe in Dalma Kafschus. Just like you believe that when someone's door closes, if they say they keep kosher, they do, then you should believe that when someone's door closes, that they're following the sexual halachos. And if they're celebrating their love and their intimacy, they can do so with hugs. Because I actually know many from people, men, that are married to their spouses and are from they go to shul three times a day. They put on tefillin. And I am done with that behind closed doors, they keep the halachos that they need to keep. Just like you should be done with that a straight couple also has halachos that they have to keep. And they keep those halachos. Because we don't know what goes on behind someone's bedroom door. You know, unless you're her, then you think you know what goes on behind someone's bedroom door. For those of you who know my personal background, I'll just start with the most freshest and recent traumatic event that happened to me a while back when a certain restaurant kicked me out because of my identity. And it's years later, and I am still picking up the pieces because it took so much courage for me to finally accept that piece of myself that I was raised to hate and loathe and ended up compartmentalizing some really good things about myself and twisting truths just because I was so worried about comments like that and pain like that that put me back in the closet for many more years. And I can tell you the extensive damage, the psychological and emotional damage that it does to a person, not because of their identity, because of the hate and the judgment of others that's where depression comes in. That's where suicide comes in. Because people want love and people want acceptance. Their depression and their anxiety comes from comments like that. And I don't know about you, but who wants to take on that responsibility and that achrayas to cause someone else such incredible pain? Last time I checked, if you believe in God, then you believe that he runs the world. And you believe that there's someone else, there's a higher power running things. So who decided that it's okay to take matters into your own hands, whether it comes to measuring someone's length of their skirt or whether it comes to what bedroom activities go on behind closed doors? Who can take on that responsibility? I mean, to me, it's only someone super holy, Someone with Das Torah, not regular people with a podcast or no podcast. I really want to reiterate that I don't want anybody to go cancel and to write hateful things because that's not the point of this. People should say what they want and feel how they want on their own podcasts and I can choose to follow or not follow and I don't follow and I don't listen and I won't watch or listen. But the struggle comes when the truth comes out. And when you surrender your own ego, and when you can say, MS, I hurt you. MS, I said things that are hurtful and vile. So to all the girls and boys out there that heard that voice note, or have heard other hateful and judgmental comments, to you I say, focus on yourself. Don't worry about what others think. Ask yourself, what's going to make me happy? Because those people, at the end of the day, go home to their lives and do their things, and they're not affected by the opinions and harsh words that they've said to you. You have to live with that. So it's your choice to let those things affect you or not. I actually have my own work to do now, because hearing that and then reaching out to her and not getting the apology that I thought I would get or not getting that validation means I need to do more work to make sure that people like her don't affect me because I know who I am and I know what my intentions are and I know that Hashem loves me. So I can't let someone affect me. So to those of you out there, just know you'll be fine. Embrace who you are. Do good things. Keep spreading love 
and be true to yourself. And to those of you that watch the video and have opinions and don't agree with that lifestyle, you should know not everyone agrees with your lifestyle and that's okay. That's what makes the world go round. And for those of you that are watching and saying, but what about tradition? And what about halacha? And what about the Torah? We have to speak up. Speak up. You can disagree, but speak up with love. Because love makes the world go around. And when you come from a hateful place, and when you come from a malicious place, and you use vile, trashy words, and you speak that way, your message is diluted. Nobody hears you because it's covered up by tones of malice and hate. And as Yidin, that comes first. And as humans, that always comes first. Love wins. Now I want to reiterate, I don't want anybody to cause hate to her. I'm not trying to promote any kind of cancel culture. But there are a bunch of lessons that can be learned here. Number one, when the words come out of your mouth, you are no longer owning those words. So if you're saying something hateful, those are your words. They came out of your mouth. Those were hateful words, whether it's private or whether it's public. Remember that. Number two, we don't live in the world of truth. The truth will only be revealed to us one day. And we don't know which sin is greater, whether it's talking Lush and Hara. Imagine, by the way, if we didn't let people into shuls, or we didn't let people into schools, or we didn't accept people for every sin they did. Nobody would be accepted anywhere because everybody sins. Number three, if we want compassion, we have to give compassion. We don't know other people's struggles. We don't know other people's challenges. Number four, super simple. Love makes the world go around. We all need a bunch more of that. Number five, opinions are just opinions. Chances are there are other people out there that are going to have different opinions than you. That has to be okay. We can't get upset every time someone thinks differently than us. Number six, for those of you that are listening to her voice note and everything that's going on and thinking like, Hashem doesn't love me, this is what Judaism is about, it's not. There are plenty of delicious, yummy Jews all around the world waiting with open arms to accept you for exactly who you are. And for me personally, the lesson that I'm learning here is, Im ain't li mili. I don't have time to be busy with what everybody else is thinking, what's going on in their mind. I'm taking care of myself. And I think we all need to do that, no matter where you are on the spectrum. Worry about yourself. Be busy with yourself. The more you give to yourself, and the more you really, really love yourself, the less time you're going to have to be obsessing about who's keeping what, and who's doing what, and who's celebrating what, and who's publicizing what. And instead, you'll be busy with yourself. And again, what does it mean? Derech Eretz Kadmala Torah. Respect comes first. It comes before somebody's politics. It comes before someone's religion. And it comes before someone's sexuality. We were all created with a Tzalem Elohim. And that's step one. When we love each other enough and we respect each other enough, everything else will fall into place. No matter where you land in the choices that you make in your life. Love is the answer.